All right, album review. Jeremy Zucker, Love Is Not Dying. This album I actually really liked, but at first I wasn't even planning on doing a review. I wake up this morning, a bunch of people's Instagram stories are about this, and I thought maybe I'll check that out. I log into Spotify, that's the first thing that pops up, so I listen through it. I really liked it, wasn't planning on doing a review until a few minutes ago. It was on my YouTube from Visionary Music Group. And so I figured, let's track, or let's uh, review this. And it starts off with Still, which moves straight into the second track. And I gotta say, one thing, if I had to say one thing was consistent through all this, it has to be all of the transitions. Moving from track to track, the end of the track to the beginning of a new one. It is so smooth. Every single time. And it's hard to do that. You know, you gotta give them props on that. And the only other time I've even heard this, or heard throughout the whole album, an artist with the smooth transitions, was Wallows on Nothing Happens. And if you've seen my review for that, you know that's an album that I really liked. So that is definitely an amazing thing. Moving on, though, uh, yeah, the first and second tracks, I was still a little on the fence about the album. But track three, Somebody Loves You, is a really good, like, it changed my mind into, yeah, you know, I think this is pretty good, actually. I will say there is one lyric when he mentions he went into the city for four hours to see if his lover, I don't know, like, wife or girlfriend or whatever, would miss him. And I will say four hours... I mean, that's not that long. Maybe if he said, like, he went for the weekend or he went for a day. But I'm not going to, like, nitpick every single lyric. Uh, it's pretty solid. Orchid. So here's two songs in a row. Somebody Loves You and Orchid. Both just absolutely amazing. And then Lake House is probably one of my favorite parts on the album. Because at this point, all these songs are slower. All these songs are more mellow. And I was... I, I was liking it, but I was just hoping, hopefully he switches something up. Hopefully something happens here. And I am a, I mean, I listen to basically everything under the sun. Um, as you see, I got an AJR, AJR record here. I even listen to metal and I play guitar. So I heard this come in and I was thinking, there it is on the track Lake House. This guitar comes in near the end of it. I don't know how clear you're going to be able to hear that in the recording, but that, when I heard that, I immediately thought, there it is. Like, I'm sold on this. This is probably my favorite song, and it's really getting me into the album. And Good For Her is another slower song, and it's, like I'm saying the whole time, the transitions are so smooth that you just go from one song into the next, you can't even really tell when one ends and one begins unless you're like looking at the screen or whatever or looking if you have a CD and you see like the track number change. If you just got in your headphones and you're not looking at your phone or whatever, you honestly can't tell. And then it moves into, I mean, this is like the highest point of the album. It's, it's weird. It's like a roller coaster, but a reverse roller coaster, if that makes any sense. Most roller coasters have the Biggest fall first, then second. But then, like, I think the Beast at Kings Island has the larger fall second. That's this. You reach your high point and you're thinking, wow, this is pretty good. Boom. Second time comes around and now you're completely sold on it. Not Your Friend moves into full stop. The best I've heard on the album. And the lyrics on Not Your Friend are... Not the best for the first 10 or 15 seconds or so. Um, I'm not going to lie. The first time I listened to it, I cringed a little bit. But on my second listen through, and then I decided to give it a third listen, I started to really like it. You get in a full stop, and it's kind of like a part two of Not Your Friend. And you're thinking, wow, this is, you know, it's a pretty good album. Next, you get to Julia, which he had released beforehand. At the time, I wasn't a big fan of it, and I will say, this did not change my opinion on it at all. 
because I heard this and the second time around I was thinking maybe, you know, maybe now I'm used to the album and I'm used to the style. Maybe I'll like it more. I liked it a little bit more, but overall it's just not, that song's just not my thing. Hell or Flying, same thing. Now you're starting to see a little bit of a decrease in the album, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, this goes without saying, but it's 2020, so I'm just going to say it anyway. All this stuff's just my opinion. I'm not like a musical expert or anything. Always I'll Care was the lowest point of the album, in my opinion, um, for the first 10 seconds. I, like 10, 15, I don't know. I, I don't have exact timestamps. But at first I was thinking, eh, it's okay. But then you get past the first chorus and it starts to be smooth sailing again. It never fully recovers from the beginning. But once again, it is a solid song. Brooks, another slower song. And then Oh Mexico, I'm not going to be counting the bonus tracks on here. It closes with Oh Mexico, which is a little bit of a lower note to close it on. I feel like a better closer would have been Hell or Flying or maybe Good For Her. But overall, the album, I've never listened to this artist before other than the single Julia. Um, I mean, I really liked it. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite album of the year, but every album also has its negatives. The problems on this, it, he tries to do kind of the Billie Eilish effect. Billie Eilish, though, when she has all her stuff in lowercase and she has those deep lyrics, you can tell that's coming from, like, a genuine part of herself. And I feel like Zucker, with the same thing, doing all the lowercase and trying to get deep lyrics, some of the deepest lyrics, some of the stuff he was trying the most on here, just came off as a little bit corny, a little bit cringy. Um, I mean, every record's gonna have that. But the way that he tried to force it on you, if there's cringe lyrics, I'd rather just have them, you know, happen. Have a few cringe, cringe lyrics be done with it. But he really tried to, like, force it in your face. Here, look at these lyrics. Now, like, I'm so deep. It's just not quite there. And the other thing, this is just personal preference, so it can't really count against the album. But I don't like how every song's slow. You need to have at least a few high points. A few bangers. You need to have balance. You can't have a whole album of bangers without having your low, slower songs. You can't have a whole album of slower songs without having the bangers. The only time I really heard that was, like I said, on Lake House. was really the only banger moment I heard. Um, definitely, he showed signs throughout the album of, oh, here we go, and then it would just kind of, like, dry out. Overall, though, this album... Um, I liked it. It's not my favorite thing in the world. I'm feeling a solid 6.5, maybe a light 7. Um, that's not a bad review, by the way. I know in school it would be like a... I think it'd be a D. Um, but anything above a 5 is positive. So before you all get outraged, anything above a 5 is a positive. Anything's under a negative. A 5 is just kind of a... Eh. So I'm feeling probably a 6.5 on it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you next time. And by the way, speaking of, I have also released an album. And you can watch all those videos um, under this. And in my SoundCloud, I will also link that in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next video.